May the God who creates us, redeems us, and sustains us be with us this day and remain with us always. Amen. Good morning. Who, what, when, where, why, and how? So what are you waiting for? Time is nigh, the end draws near. Now, now we are called to be who we are. Look in the mirror. What do you want? Hope, hope, hope. We long to be filled with hope. And all that we can see is that winter is near. Who? Who do you long to be? And where? Where is God? Where is the Holy of Holies? And when will we know what we need to know to be who we long to be? And why are we hesitant now? on the precipice, the edge. How, Almighty One, will any of this change? And how will we know when we are seeing you? This is what I've been thinking about and praying about in this liminal time, this time between time, from moment to moment, in the pauses in between. We wait for an election to be certified. We wait for a virus cloud to end. The days grow shorter, the nights longer. We complete our season of ordinary time and turn now toward Advent, something new that we've known before but will perhaps see again for the very first time. It's on the horizon lodged just on the edge, the line in the distance where the sun cracks into light. We are poised in this moment, in this time. Now, 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 between dark and light, night and day. The author of the letter to the Ephesians wrote to a people of a faith community in a city in Greece in a time somewhat like our own. The author, most likely a disciple of Paul's, offers a clear direction for how they may regain their sense of hope and holiness and wholeness. In the midst of trying, polarizing times with false doctrines and teachings, threatening to divide and break apart their communities of faith, the author of Ephesians writes, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ will give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. I pray that the eyes of your heart will have enough light to see 
what is the hope of God's call and the greatness of God's power that is working among us. And my paraphrase of these words is, I pray that you will feel God's hand even now, that you will know what God can do. When we are faced with stilted thanksgivings and muted Christmases, vacant holes where once was anticipated trips and twinkling lights and abundant feasting, we are left with the decisions to stay home, to try to stay safe, and to find some joy in yet another God-forsaken Zoom call. In our country, where we are still being pummeled by an election yet unsettled, and those of us here in Wayne County find ourselves with the disturbing possibility that Jim Crow voter suppression is rearing its ugly head and our choice, our votes will not be counted, we are in a time more than ever in need of a word from our God. And I want to tell you, I've heard that word. I've seen that word. Over and over again these last few months, I have been gathering with our congregations, meeting over Zoom with our communities, and in each gathering, I begin by asking this question. In the midst of your time in this community of faith, can you tell me of a specific moment when you had an experience of the holy? Can you share a moment in time when you felt God's presence? And then after a pause to give all of the introverts time to think, people begin to share. And people, you all, begin to tell me and everyone else on the call a moment when you knew God, when you felt God's presence, when you knew of the greatness of God's power working among us. And these stories, your stories, touch my soul and fill my heart. And let me offer now to you just a few of the sacred moments that I have heard from one end of our diocese to the other. There was a woman who had unexpectedly lost her husband. And she was awash, as she said, with grief and pain and loneliness. And she found herself at a retreat at her church, and the rector invited the people to wander in the pews, in and among the pews of the sanctuary, as if it were a labyrinth. And at a certain moment, the rector would ask the people to stop and to look. And this woman, filled with grief, heard the invitation to stop and there looked up and found herself looking at the cross, the crucifix by the altar. And it was there and it was then that she felt God wash over her. And she said she knew that she would be okay. Still sad, but okay. Not alone. 
another family described a time when their grandson had a renaming ceremony marking his transition from one gender to another. And as part of the liturgy, the rector invited the people in the congregation who supported this young person in their journey for all of them in the congregation to please stand. And the granddad who told this story, standing there with his grandchild, turned around and saw his entire church community standing in affirmation and support. And he said then that I felt the power of God washing over us, such acceptance, such love. Another parishioner described in a different community, described the holy transformation she had while participating in a congregational book study on white fragility. She said she was completely blown away and her life actually altered when she began to understand the distinction between her intent and her impact on people of color. And I heard her say, it just changed everything for me. And there are literally hundreds more stories like these And it is my profound honor to hear these stories, your stories, for they touch my soul and they fill my heart and they offer me hope and holiness and wholeness. Your stories, our stories, the stories of our congregational lives. When I hear them, I remember again that we are not and never have been in all of this alone. And through your stories, I remember in the marrow of my bones what the author of Ephesians wrote oh so long ago, long ago. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. My friends, our hope is in the name of the Lord the maker of heaven and earth, from this time forth forevermore. Amen. And dear friends, life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who journey the way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God, creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen.